How's it going guys? This is Major League Fishing Pro Randy Howell here coming to you from my garage at Lake Gunnersville, Alabama. Just finally got uh, the time to set up the camera out here just to send this little uh, video out to Fishers of Men. Hopefully all you guys that are uh, stumble across it or uh, get it sent to you or whatever. I mean, Fishers of Men is the most amazing organization for uh, weekend tournament anglers ever created. I've been friends with Al Odom and the whole family and all the guys for 20, you know, 20 plus years now. Uh, the first time Fishermen started out, I was one of the first guys to speak and Jay Ellis and been doing it for all my life. And it's been really uh, great and just been great to see the impact that Fishers of Men has had on the the fishing world and the weekend angler world you know all the guys you can go fish tournaments have a good time but you get to hear the truth of god's word on a friday night and a message and so many people have shown up to fish tournaments not expecting to uh, have any encounter at all with the holy spirit of god and ends up happening on a friday night at a meeting somewhere or at a weigh-in and uh and i've been part of it and seen it happen so many times and time again and that's the real trophies that i get when i get to heaven all those other trophies that are in the house on the trophy case those mean nothing in eternity when we all go to heaven one day so those trophies uh the fishers of men the men and women and the people that we end up helping turn over to christ and they get saved that's what our trophy is all about and uh so let me tell you just a quick little bit if you hadn't heard much of my testimony maybe you have at certain events if you've been there you've heard me speak and at full entirety, 45 minutes, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna try to do a quick, you know, uh, 10 minutes or so here, just to just to kind of give you a little, a little rundown, a little uh, inspiration, a little encouragement of why, you know, I want you to know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. If you don't, if you're on the fence right now, or if you think you've been to church a lot all your life, and maybe you've uh, never really surrendered your life to Christ, and really you know, what, what we say, get saved, you know, accept Christ into your heart and, you know, turn and, you know, try to live for him, live right and, and, and do everything that he wants us to do to make a difference in this world. That's what, uh, that's what the day is about. So hopefully this is a divine, a divine appointment right now that you're watching this. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about me. I grew up in North Carolina. I started fishing right out of, you know, in high, in school, high school, I uh, became a fishing guide at Lake Gaston, North Carolina. My parents had a fish camp marina business. Some of you may have been there before back in the old days, Howells Timber Lodge. But I grew up as a guide, boat rentals, cabins, and tackle store. I run tackle store, run a gas pump, and did all that as a teenager. I uh, love fishing. I uh, grew up in a Christian school. My mom was kind of this Christian, the spiritual leader of the household. My dad wasn't a Christian when I was young until he got a lot older in life. But as a kid, my mom always, you know, my drug testimony is that my mom drug me to church every time the doors opened, and thank God she did. You know, it paid off and it instilled that uh, foundation in me that made a huge difference in my life as I got older. Well, long story short, as I got in the latter part of high school, I developed a disease called ulcerative colitis in my colon. Uh, took medicine, did you know everything doctors said do. As a teenager, you know you're invincible. You really don't realize how sick, you know you really are with this uh, ulcerative colitis disease. So I, you know, loved fishing, wanted to fish professionally. Robin my, was my girlfriend in high school, high school sweethearts. We we, we knew we were going to get married right out of high school. So the year I got out of high school, we got married, and I started right out of high school on the pro tour, on the Bassmaster Invitational tour qualified the first year to be on the top 100 tour uh, and six months after we got married I was at a red man regional in Georgia and uh, my colon ruptured while I was out on the water in the tournament trying to make the red man all-american at the time started throwing up blood had to come in went eight hours back to North Carolina throwing up blood went straight in the hospital that night still not knowing how sick I really was and got there just in the nick of time and God had, had protected me for that 12 hours or so that I was uh, my holes, three holes had perforated in my colon. Everything was dumping out, basically poisoning me inside and I didn't even know it. And went into emergency surgery, went through uh, two weeks laying in the hospital there, had an ileostomy bag on my side. They took two thirds of my colon out, uh, almost died, but the Lord saved me, kept me alive for a purpose. I believe for this day, you know, 100% to, you know, to have a testimony to tell you guys and tell other people that I've done over the last 28 or 30 years about now 
but he saved me through that. I went through two more major surgeries at Duke University Medical Center, had reconstructive surgery, did away with the ileostomy bag, made a J pouch out of my small intestine. It's called a, a pull through surgery. And uh, then that's why I stay so skinny, you know, today really because I don't have any cold and everything flows through pretty fast and I uh, have to be careful what I eat, how I eat, when I eat, things like that. But the Lord saved me, healed me. He brought me through all that. And then uh, I show up, never had to miss a tournament at the time, went right to the first invitational uh, top 100 tour that I qualified to be on. I met Terry Chupp, our evangelist that was our chaplain and at a, at a Fellowship of Christian Anglers meeting that we had. And he could tell I was 117 pounds, five foot 11. You could tell I'd been sick. He asked me my story. I told him a little bit of what I just told you guys. And that was my story. He said, well, you got a testimony. You got to share that testimony with people and help people with that. And I said, you know, testimony, man, I can't, I can't. What's a testimony? He said, what you, that story you just told, that's testimony. That's how Jesus communicated. And that's how Jesus, you know, led his ministry on earth, you know, for the 33 years he was on earth was telling stories. They called them parables, but telling your story. Everybody has a story and everybody wants to hear your story. And so that's my story. He told me, you gotta go to church and share that. And I said, man, I can't talk in front of people about that. You know, I was 19 years old at the time and all I could talk about was fishing. But I heard that little voice inside say, hey, I didn't ask you to be a missionary in China. I said, I said okay, Lord, I'll, I'll do it. And so I, I went with Terry to Ufala Baptist Church, uh, Lake Ufala, First Baptist Church at Lake Ufala. And I spoke that night, uh, cried and couldn't hardly talk in front of anybody. It was just a big mess. But in the end, all the, the kids, teenagers came down, you know, in front. A lot of them got saved. A lot of them turned their hearts back to, to the Lord. And it just was really a special night. It showed me what my purpose was. It showed me why. I had been through all that adversity and it made sense of it. So it kind of gave me a purpose now to go and tell that story. So I started going with Terry to a lot of the churches, sharing that testimony, uh, watching the Lord use it in a lot of different ways. And it was just an awesome deal how the Lord used that to, uh, to make a difference. And it kind of made sense to me of why I went through all the stuff that I went through. So um, to my, you know, fast forward, you know, 12, that was, that was like in, uh, way back in 1993, uh, at the very beginning of my career. And then I started fishing on the tour, went through a bunch of years there, uh, qualified for my first Bassmaster Classic in 1997, Bassmaster Classic in Birmingham, Alabama. And uh, whoever thought, you know, fast forward past that now, 17 years later, uh, at the same Bassmaster Classic again, I qualified for it. It was my 12th Classic, and it was in Birmingham, Alabama in, in uh, 2014. And full circle, the Lord gave me the desires of my heart. My whole career, I had you know tried to put him first, tried to tell my story everywhere, and I've really watched how God has used it so many ways. And uh, but, but I always wanted to win the Classic, and I knew at the time that was the biggest thing in the sport was the Bassmaster Classic. And I knew, I, you know, if I could win that, the Lord would give me a bigger platform to reach more people. And uh, lo and behold, 2014 rolls around right back on the same stage that I started my classic career in. Uh, and he let everything come together. And, you know, the, as the miracle story, I was in 11th place, nine and a half pounds back, no real mathematical chance of winning, didn't really expect or have no thought that I could win. And the last morning I'm running up the lake and have an overwhelming urge as I call it, but it was the Holy Spirit telling me in, in my heart, my mind, turn around and go back to this other bridge. And I tried to fight it for a minute, but I knew it was the Lord's guidance. As a Christian, the Holy Spirit lives in us and he guides us and directs us with that still small voice, the Bible says, and I knew it was overwhelming. And I turned the boat around, turned my triton around, mercury wide open, you know, run back to that bridge, pulled up, and boom, caught one of my first cast, second cast, third cast was a seven pounder. And the rest of the day, you know, my, my fr friend came up on the bridge quickly. I told him to call my wife, my boys. They were at another place. They came to watch, got to watch the whole day, had hundreds of spectators there. It was just a Cinderella story, a picture perfect day and a miracle day. I caught, I don't know, a hundred bass maybe in this one, on this one bridge in Riprap. That's where the Livingston Howler crankbait was born as I, uh, changed over to that and culled everything out just about and ended up, you know, putting that bait on the map that day as I caught all those fish and then, you know, ended up 
end of the day going in not knowing that I was going to win or having a chance to win. I just thought I had the greatest day of my life fishing. Ended up winning the Classic by one pound even that day. And God's providence and his timing and his perfect will came, you know, together with my prayers and my will. I'd always prayed it will happen, but it took 12 years, 12 Classics, not 12 years. But it, it, ta it took uh, almost 20 years of trying, but 17 years uh between that classic and that classic in 2014 and it really was amazing how god showed out he did it in such a way that everybody in the world that watched it to this day the story still lives on the powerful feeling that everybody saw at that way in that day when they heard the story of how it all unfolded because god's hand was in it he showed the world that day that no man could do what happened that day. It wasn't my power at all, nothing I did. I was just the, the vessel, so to speak, the guy the Lord uh, used that day to make this story unfold, you know, so it, was, it would live on and, you know, forever in the, in the fishing world. And uh, so I'm so thankful that he did it that day and he showed me that day that when you put your faith and trust in him, it might not be in your time and it might not be how you like it, when you like it, just like everything we go through in life with ups and downs, adversity, the rain falls on the just and the unjust, the Bible says, and we have to go through the same things everybody else. Just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you're exempt from problems and it just gives you uh, somebody to, to look to, to trust in, and to know that all things work together for good, the Bible says. All things work together for good to those that love the Lord and are called according to His purposes. So when you put your faith and trust in Him, you're not exempt from problems, but you now know that He filters everything that comes into your life. So if something bad comes to your life, He's in control, and He, he may allow it for a purpose for something greater down the road that we don't see at the time, but we have to endure and go through it and put your faith and trust in Him. And as you get down the road later, you look back and you see what His purpose was and why it happened and all that. So. Uh, that's the main thing that, that this whole faith is all about and what this whole story and my testimony is all about. I got so many more great, amazing stories that you wouldn't even believe some of the stuff if I could tell you all the stories and I'll share them a lot of times. If you ever get to hear me at a, at a church event or a Fishers of Men Regional somewhere or uh, any place you ever hear me, uh, hear my name somewhere, try to come out and listen. I've got some amazing stories, some miracles God has worked in our life. More than that. Uh, the classic's just one that I know more people to relate to. That's why I'm telling that story today. But that is just what God can do when you put your faith and trust in Him. Psalm 37, 4 says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and He'll give you the desires of your heart. And that was a desire of my heart, and I've delighted myself in the Lord, and I've done His work, and I've tried to be faithful, not perfect at all, but I've tried to live a life for Him, and He blessed me with that classic title, and He did it in a way where everybody knew it was Him and not me. And so today, you know, that's what I want to encourage you. If you're watching this little video today and you, you've never heard anything about Jesus before or you've heard about it all your life, either one, you're in the same boat. Uh, you know, the thief on the cross laid there stood on the cross in the Bible was there beside Jesus. He, he knew nothing. They didn't even say his name in the Bible. And at the last second, he just looked at Jesus and said, remember me. Um, and Jesus said, today you'll be with me in paradise. He didn't tell that guy to get down off the cross, you know, how sorry you are, what would you do wrong, or why would you do this, or why would you live the way you did. He didn't do nothing. He simply said in his heart, basically, you're forgiven, you'll be with me in paradise. And that's all it takes today is you just to have that heart change right now, and you have that Holy Spirit pounding on your door of your heart right now, and pounding in your chest right now, and that's that feeling He's coming in saying, hey, I want to have a relationship with you. I want you to serve me and live my li live your life with me, for me, and make a difference in this world. That's the four main things that they teach at my church, Church of the Highlands in Birmingham, Alabama. Is first is uh, know God, and then find freedom, and then discover your purpose, and then make a difference. That's the four things, and that's how we try to live, and that's the four things I want you to try to live for too. First is know God, and this is the step right now. If you don't know God, you don't know Jesus, and you as a personal Lord and Savior, I'm going to say a quick, easy prayer right now, and you can just say it along with me and just say, Lord, uh, I ask you to come into my heart right now. I ask you to forgive me for my sins. I'm a sinner. I want to turn from my sins, Lord. I believe that you died on the cross and you rose again, and Lord, I want to walk the rest of my life with you. Just give me the chance right now, Lord. Forgive me for all my sins and take me into your heart right now, Lord, and let me live for you the rest of my life. 
If you said something like that right now, as simple as that, uh, you're saved. And that's all you got to do. It's a heart change. And right now, if you believe it and you said it, you receive it, you are in the kingdom now. Your, lamb, your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and you're going to heaven one day. But there's more to than just going to heaven and having your ticket to heaven. Now you got to make a difference. Now you got to follow in the next steps to, to learn more about how to grow in the Word. You need to find a good Bible-believing church. Send emails to anybody on this info to me on Randy Howell Fishing on Instagram or Facebook or any of the Fishers of Men people here through the website, and we can get you follow-up information on how to walk the next step and how to live the Christian life, and that's what it's all about, and that's what I'm here today to tell you about. So I'm proud of you. If you made that decision, you made, you said that prayer now. Don't delay. This could be your last chance. You never know. Nobody's promised tomorrow in this crazy world we live in now. Uh, you want to make sure that you've got your, your complete faith and trust in Jesus Christ for this rest of this life and then the life to come in eternity. So anyway, thank you guys again for supporting Fishers of Men, being a part of it, fishing them. Uh, I hope today is a life-changing event you, that you receive Christ in your heart today. And if you, if you already knew Jesus, I pray that you rededicate your heart today and you'll, you'll live uh, harder, stronger, more passion to tell more people about Jesus every day that we're out here because that's our purpose now, to make a difference. So, again, thank you guys for following us, for fishing, Fishers of Men. Hope to see you on the water at a tournament one day in the future. And good luck, God bless, and we'll see you soon.